What's going on guys? Sam with Real Legit Fishing here. Hey, hey. come on, I'm kicking you out. Now back to what I was saying in this video, I'm gonna be comparing the football head jig with the swim jig. Now first things first, I know we hate it, but I need to give you guys a quick history lesson over the swim jig. Now in the late 1900s, Bill Lauer, who was later a Bassmaster Elite Series Pro, was fishing down the Ohio River and was fishing a jig similar to this football head jig here, had an unsuccessful cast, started swimming it back, and cast after cast after cast. He got hit, and uh, since then, the swim jig has evolutionized into this here and it's now being mass produced by Strike King, v and um, Dirty Jigs, and a bunch of other big fishing industry companies. Now I want you guys to think of this swim jig here as pretty much just a more low profile and finesse spinnerbait. So you can throw this thing just about any time you'll throw a spinnerbait and more. Now a swim jig is one of the most versatile baits you can find anywhere in the fishing industry today and there's just so much you can do with a bait like this. So I'm gonna split this video up into a few sections. So first I'm gonna talk about the trailers I'll use with the bait. Now right here I have a few of my darker swim jigs. Here I have a brown, I've got a black and blue, and I've got a green pumpkin with a bit of a watermelon flake. Now with these darker baits, I'm gonna throw these with a crawfish trailer. Now for instance, I'll throw them with like a rage tail menace, and also missile bait makes a really good twin tail that I'll throw with some of my darker baits. Now with my pearl white swim jig, this is a strike cane. Now you might notice I do have a few rattles on here and I'll go over why I have those on there later. But with this pearl white, a lot of time that's gonna be imitating a shad, so this will be perfect. But like a swimming fluke or reaction innovations also makes a really good paddle tail you can throw with this. Now this bait can be thrown in all kinds of water clarity, although when you are in some of your muddy water, I would prefer to switch over and add some rattles onto your bait. Now I know Strike King makes some with rattles already on them, just like this one here. This is a 3 8 ounce pearl white Strike King swim jig and it has these rattles on here and it'll just attract a little more attention to your jig. Now in my opinion, the most important thing about a bait is where in the world are you gonna throw this bait because that's where you're gonna catch your fish. Now uh, like I said earlier, this bait is extremely versatile and uh, you can throw it all over the place. Now you can throw this thing in wood, you can throw it on lay downs, you can throw it in grass, you can throw it in grass lines, you can throw it in points, and uh, just about anywhere looking to cover a bunch of water and stick with this suspended bait, this bait is gonna be a perfect option for you. Now the only time I'll be a little iffy about throwing this bait is when the water temperature is under 50 degrees. Now the only reason for that is when the water temperature really cools down, the fish also start to really slow down and a lot of times they're not gonna want to give out that much energy just for a little bite to eat. But uh, enough talking about that, let's get on to a rod and reel you're gonna wanna throw with your swim jig. Now for my rod and reel setup, I like to use a 7.3 to 7.6 foot St. Croix Legend Series rod with a good light tip on there. So not only can I make this good long cast, but also when I set the hook, I don't pull away from them, just like the spinner bait. Now for my reel, I throw a seven one to one gear ratio Lose Pro G. Now I like this good high gear ratio because when I'm done getting through that strike zone, I can rip it in real quick and make more casts, but also I can keep it up there high in the water column when I need to. Now if I do use braid, I'll use 30 to 40 pound Power Pro, and if I do use a fluorocarbon leader, I'll use 12 to 25 pound fluorocarbon sunlight. Now one thing I want you guys to keep in mind, we're not only throwing your swim jig, but also with your football head jig, and you're not trying to imitate an injured fish like you are with a jerk bait. You're trying to make a good, subtle presentation for a good vulnerable target for these fish with your jigs. Now enough said with that, let's move on to our football head jig. Now one huge advantage you have out there fishing with a football head jig is gonna be in your rocks. Now with this jig, like it says, it has that football shaped head, so it has a rounded belly right here. And not only that, but the eye on this jig is facing up. With your swim jig, it's facing out. So say you're fishing, your swim jig gets stuck in a rock in this rounded belly and the upward tension from your line, so you're gonna pull this jig right there through the rocks. Now the one downside with this jig, this shaped head right here, is gonna act as a rake. Going through the grass is the one no-no in fishing. A football head jig is gonna be fishing in your grass and your vegetation. Now just like your swim jig, you're gonna have a lot of places 
you can fish this football head jig. Now most of it is gonna center around rock, like the ledges and drop off and rocky points, rocky banks, gravel slopes, and anything that has to do with rocks, a football head jig will be a great option. Now not only do you have a bunch of places, you can fish a football head jig, but there's a bunch of different types of ways you can fish this. Now the three main ways you can fish a football head jig is you can stroke it, you can hop it, or you can drag it. Now when you're stroking it, you're gonna be hopping this thing about two and a half to three feet off the bottom trying to get that good reaction bite and it's a little more active and I really get those fish moving. Now with your hopping you're going to move it six to eight inches off the bottom. Now it's a little more subtle but even more subtle you can drag this bait along the bottom kick up all the dust and rocks off the bottom. Now this all is going to depend on the mood and what these fish are wanting. Now from past experience, I like about three foot of water clarity when fishing your football head jigs. Although you can switch up with darker colors, lighter colors, put rattles, and really make a big range of water clarities when you can fish this jig. Now for my rod and reel combo, for my three eighths to five eighths ounce jigs, I prefer a seven foot to seven three foot medium heavy St. Croix Legend Series rod. Now with my three quarter ounce to one ounce, I prefer a seven four heavy rod, get a little more backbone in there and really get those good hook sets on those big heavy jigs. Well, I think that's gonna wrap up our swim jig and football head jig comparison. Thank you all for sticking around. If you like this video, make sure to click that like button. If you wanna see more videos like this, subscribe down below and I will see you guys next time. Cool.